we need a new tank. Today, more than seven decades after the end of the greatest war in history, the debate about Allied tanks continues. Was the American-designed and built Sherman M4 medium tank a colossal blunder, a wonder weapon, or both? As the United States approached entry into World War II, armored employment was doctrinally governed by Field Manual 100-5, Operations. It stated, the armored division is organized primarily to perform missions that require great mobility and firepower. It is given decisive missions. It is capable of engaging in all forms of combat, but its primary role is in offensive operations against hostile rear areas. Subscribe to our channel and get notification when we release new episodes. U.S. doctrine held that the most critical anti-tank work, stopping massed enemy tank attacks, was to be done primarily by towed and self-propelled anti-tank guns operated by tank destroyer battalions with friendly tanks used in support if possible. The first American main battle tank employed in combat in World War II was the M3 General Grant, named for American Civil War General Ulysses S. Grant. The British used this tank in North Africa as early as 1941. The M3 was the result of a crisis atmosphere that prevailed immediately after the fall of France. It is likely that no tank in history ever went from design to production faster than the General Grant. Its major defect was the gun mount. The 75mm gun was carried in a sponson in the right front of the hull and could traverse only 15 degrees, a major disadvantage in tank battles. However, the M3 was only an interim measure. Its overall performance was not satisfactory, and the tank was withdrawn from combat in most theaters as soon as the M4 Sherman tank became available in larger numbers. The U.S. Army Ordnance Department designed the M4 medium tank as a replacement for the M3 medium tank. The prototype of the M4, named for Grant's subordinate William Tecumseh Sherman, debuted in 1941 and was accepted for production that October. Its designers consciously emphasized speed and mobility, limiting the thickness of the armor and the size of the main gun, thereby compromising on firepower and survivability. Production The first production of the Sherman took place at the Lima Locomotive Works. In 1940, the British established a tank mission in Washington under the leadership of Michael Dewar to persuade the Americans to build British tanks. It was later deemed wiser to stick to American designs. At first, the tanks had to be paid for, but in March 1941, President Roosevelt's Lend-Lease Act came into force. Equipment was loaned to Britain in exchange for American use of British bases. So, the first production Sherman was given to the U.S. Army for evaluation, and the second tank of the British order went to London. With a crew of five, the Sherman weighed over 66,000 pounds, was 19 feet 4 inches long, 8 feet 7 inches wide, and 9 feet high. It had a range of 100 miles, armor 0.59 to 2.99 inches thick, and a single 75mm turret gun, plus one coaxial 7.52mm machine gun, and a 50 caliber machine gun on the turret. The power plant consisted of twin General Motors diesel engines that developed 500 horsepower. Its maximum road speed was 30 miles per hour, and it could ford a stream three feet deep, mount a vertical obstacle two feet high, or cross a trench seven feet five inches wide. The American industrial complex was not affected by enemy aerial bombing or submarine warfare as was Japan, Germany, and to a lesser degree, Great Britain. An enormous amount of steel for tank production was diverted to building warships. Steel used in naval construction amounted to the equivalent of about 67,000 tanks. Consequently, only about 53,500 tanks were produced during 1942 and 1943. The Army had seven main sub-designations for M4 variants during production. M4, M4A1, M4A2, M4A3, M4A4, M4A5, and M4A6. These designations did not necessarily indicate linear improvement. M4A4 did not indicate it was better than M4A3, 
These subtypes indicated standardized production variations often manufactured concurrently at different locations. The subtypes differed mainly in engines, though the M4A1 differed from the other variants by its fully cast upper hull with a distinctive rounded appearance. British nomenclature for Germans was by marked numbers for the different hulls with letters for differences in armament and suspension. A for a vehicle with the 76 mm gun, B for the 105 mm howitzer, C for the 17 pounder gun, and Y for any vehicle equipped with HVSS. For example, the British operated M4A176 was known as Sherman IIA. Armament by 1943, the Sherman was getting past its prime. The dual-purpose 75mm gun was outclassed by comparable German weapons and was not powerful enough for the thick armor in later vehicles. As the Battle of Normandy developed, it became obvious that the Sherman was seriously outgunned and inadequately armored compared to the German Panther and Tiger tanks. The range of the 88mm gun mounted in the latter, for example, was on average four times greater than the Sherman's 75 mm To compound the problem, the Sherman's high-profile silhouette made it a more visible target. An officer at Lulworth Camp came up with the idea of fitting the British 76.2 mm gun, known as the 17-pounder. The new design would be known as the Sherman Firefly. The 17-pounder was much bigger than the 75 mm so the turret had to be modified with a bulge at the back to fit the radio and an extra hatch for the loader. The new ammunition was bigger, so there were changes inside too. Indeed, the demand for space was so great that the hull machine gunner sitting to the right of the driver was disposed of and the weapon aperture sealed. From May to July 1944, the Army accepted a limited run of 254 M4A3E2 Jumbo Shermans which had very thick hull armor and the 75mm gun in a new, better protected T-23 style turret in order to assault fortifications. Combat The Sherman first saw combat at the Second Battle of El Alamein in October 1942 with the British 8th Army. These equipped the British 2nd, 8th, 9th, and 20th Armored Brigades. Their first encounter with tanks was against German Panzer III and IV tanks with long 50 and 75 mm guns, engaging them at 2,000 yards. There were losses to both sides. The first U.S. Shermans in battle were M4s and M4A1s in Operation Torch the following month. On December 6th, near Tuberba, Tunisia, a platoon from the 2nd Battalion, 13th Armored Regiment, was lost to enemy tanks and anti-tank guns. For the Normandy invasion and subsequent campaigns on the continent, the M4 was retrofitted with special purpose devices. The British added flails, a system of rotors and chains to clear paths through minefields, and American servicemen added jury-rigged plows for breaking through hedgerows in the Bocage country of Normandy. Perhaps the most famous variation was the duplex drive, or DD tank, a Sherman equipped with extendable and collapsible skirts that made it buoyant enough to be launched from a landing craft and make its way to shore under propeller power. The M4 was also transformed into the M32 tank recovery vehicle and the M4 mobile assault bridge carrier. Versions of the Sherman were used as bulldozers and flamethrowers. Devices of all sorts were fitted onto the Sherman's versatile, reliable chassis making it the workhorse of the Anglo-American armies of World War II. But because of its propensity to catch fire, the Sherman soon gained several nicknames. Tommy Cooker, a World War I trench cooker. Ronson's, from the cigarette lighter guaranteed in ads to light up the first time every time. And by the free poles, the burning grave. As for the cause of the fires, U.S. Army research proved that the major reason was the use of unprotected ammunition stowage in sponsons above the tracks. The common myth that the use of gasoline engines was a culprit is unsupported. Gasoline was unlikely to ignite when hit with armor-piercing shells. It was therefore somewhat ironic that the outgunned and lighter-armored Shermans defeated the Nazis by sheer weight of numbers. Enormous production numbers also resulted from the initial strategic decision to produce Shermans in large quantities 
rather than wait for a heavier armored vehicle, such as the M26 Pershing, which finally arrived just before the war's end in 1945. On the pro side, the M4 Sherman was technically uncomplicated, reliable, and mechanically well-constructed. Also, Allied Air Forces enjoyed a huge superiority over the virtually beaten Luftwaffe. Working in tandem with well-coordinated infantry, artillery, and air forces, the plentiful and trusty Shermans could vanquish most German armored formations simply by ganging up on them in overwhelming numbers when all else failed. Under Lend-Lease, 4,102 M4A2 medium tanks were sent to the Soviet Union. Of these, 2,007 were equipped with the original 75mm main gun, with 2,095 mounting the more capable 76mm gun. By 1945, some Red Army armored units were equipped entirely with Shermans. The Sherman was largely held in good regard and viewed positively by many Soviet tank crews, with compliments given to its reliability, ease of maintenance, generally good firepower, referring especially to the 76mm gun version, and decent armor protection. Pacific Theater While combat in the European theater of operations often consisted of high-profile armored warfare, the mainly naval nature of the Pacific theater of operations relegated tanks to secondary status for both the Allies and the Japanese. While the U.S. Army fielded 16 armored divisions and 70 separate tank battalions during the war, only a third of the battalions and none of the divisions were deployed to the Pacific Theater. During the early stages of combat in the Pacific, specifically the Guadalcanal Campaign, the U.S. Marine Corps' M2A4 light tank fought against the equally matched Type 95 Hago light tank. Both were armed with a 37mm main gun, However, the M2 produced in 1940 was newer by five years. By 1943, the Imperial Japanese Army still used the Type 95 and Type 97 Chiha medium tanks, while Allied forces were quickly replacing their light tanks with 75mm armed M4s. During the later years of the war, general-purpose high-explosive ammunition was preferred for fighting Japanese tanks because armor-piercing rounds which had been designed for penetrating thicker steel often went through the thin armor of the Type 95 Hago, the most commonly encountered Japanese tank, and out the other side without stopping. Later Wars After World War II, the Sherman remained a common U.S. tank, serving in the Korean War where it fought alongside the M26 Pershing and M46 Patton. The U.S. Army replaced the M4 in 1957, in favor of the M48 Patton and M60 Patton. The U.S. continued to transfer Shermans to its allies, which contributed to widespread foreign use. Shermans also went to Israel, where they remained in use until the 1980s. The Israeli upgunned 75mm M50 and 105mm armed M51 Super Shermans are remarkable examples of how a long obsolete design can be upgraded for frontline use. They saw combat in the 1967 Six-Day War, fighting Soviet World War II-era armor, such as the T-34, and also in the 1973 Yom Kippur War, proving effective even against newer, heavier Soviet tanks like the T-54 and T-55. Paraguay retired three Shermans from the Presidential Escort Regiment in 2018, which marked the end of the final service of Sherman tanks anywhere in the world. If you like these types of videos, subscribe to our channel and get notification when we release new episodes. For more interesting military history content, check out our video library.